I have Robo Killer. All right, the final four is set. Every team in it, there's a great story. UConn rolling through this tournament. Alabama high octane offense that will put up 45 or 53s probably and try to then, if they hit enough of them, who knows? Then there is, of course, the Cinderella right now with DJ Burns and company. Uh, NC State with their win against Duke. And then Purdue with Zach Eady, Rob Painter, their head coach. Those are the four left. Those are the four games. UConn, Alabama. Rob Douster for the Field of 68 will join us. Leave that up, Garrett, if you don't mind. And then we'll get to some details of each team. How much fun is watching? And I know that if you're a Duke fan, you surely aren't happy. But the story about DJ Burns and then the run that the uh, Wolfpack are on. It's awesome. It's great that an 11 seed made it. It's a great that an 11 seed made it when they had to win their conference tournament to get into the thing, and they're now in in the Final Four. It's great that they beat a blue blood along the way. It's great that they beat a blue blood that's a conference rival along the way. It's also great that we get to see GJ, DJ Burns, who I'm going to call the beefy ballerina until it, it, until I it like sticks. It. I like it. Against Zach Eady. Make sure you And get a good it. old school. I mean, look, Zach Eady's five inches taller than DJ Burns, but I do think he's going to give him some problems in a way that nobody else in this tournament has before. And should UConn continue to win, and I'm not discounting Alabama and Nate Oates here because he is an excellent coach uh, and is probably going to do this a few more times in his career, but if UConn does go through, no matter what, we're going to get a great big on big yep. where it's it, cling, clinging against either Edie or clinging against DJ Burns in, in the final. I thought the ACC already won the national championship based on the uh, the reactions over the first couple of weeks, of which they had every right to feel like they were the the bells of the ball with uh, the number of teams they had advanced, especially as we talked about at length, the, the comments from coaches uh, as the postseason uh, started up that you know they were getting disrespected that they should have had more teams in I think they've proven that in this tournament but yep. yeah now down to the one so like my point being for all of that talk if North Carolina State doesn't go and win it does it really matter like how many teams advanced and did that because I feel like I just this think that's what you could always what if your conference is having a good run in the tournament or bowl games you want to use it but Certainly. that doesn't always prove anything but the Big 12, of course, did we're gonna get have to their problem. We're going to yeah. get to them, and yeah. we're going to dog on them as, as deservedly so for, for their performances. But, no, I'm, I'm playing around in that. You would have thought that the ACC had, like, the final four based on the uh, the reactions of which they, you know, had every right to bump their chest and uh, talk a little S and uh, feel like they were the best league in the country. But, yeah, to think that it's only down to NC State at this point and NC State's an 11 seed is just kind of wild. So if they were to pull off the last – part of this and, and go beat Purdue and go beat either Alabama and UConn. I mean, they, they would leave no doubts about who the best league in the country was, and they maybe haven't already, but um, NC State's a great story. Um, they've been a lot of fun to watch. I'd love to see them go hoist the trophy at the end of this thing. UConn's obviously the buzzsaw uh, that people feel like is, is as close to unbeatable now, but Alabama's super athletic and super talented. That's going to be a fearless. hell of a matchup. They don't care what yeah. the hell anyone else thinks. They're going to fire it away. Yeah, yeah. UConn, Alabama is going to be in incredible. And then, uh, yeah, Purdue, obviously. I mean, the Zach Eady show, I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, uh, but they've got a really good, uh, you know, solid squad as well. So them and uh, NC State ought to be interesting. And, yeah, it's not the Final Four that I think a lot of people had pegged uh, do mostly to NC State, but it's a mix where you got – you know, four different leagues represented. You've got uh, all these different stories with each one in tow and, uh, you know, a little personality for each team that you can kind of self or you can kind of identify them from one another. So, yeah, I think it's a, it's a fun group and should make for a great Final Four. Carla Jenkins, who put a, a note to us up on Twitter about NC State and trying to compare it to what the Big 12 maybe needs to do going forward with football, et cetera. We'll get to that in just – there it is. Uh, 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 a snippet – on how NC State has given the ACC a viable path forward while making uh, us forget FSU and Clemson are leaving, or is leaving. The Big 12 can take a page from this if it has good teams. Thanks. Thanks, Carla, and you're yeah. on the chat room, too. And by the way, the, the ACC did have three of the top eight oh, yeah. make it to the yeah. Elite Eight before uh, eventually somebody had to eliminate the my, because of Duke and my, my point is, is that the bragging rights go to the national champion at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, all this league stuff, I feel like, is bigger than it's ever been because of realignment. Because and I've of, poked yes. at this how many times now? I've poked at, like, kind of how it's – how I don't love the – 
the constant leak smack talk because we made fun of the SEC for it all these years, and now everybody's doing it, basically. <laughs> everybody's, like, waving the banner, which is cool, and especially, you know, for us when we cover a lot of the Big 12 and all that. Um, but I'm just saying that there was a lot of smack talk, so now I feel like NC State needs to go and close the job to really slam the door. But no doubt they have every right to, to feel the way that they felt about the league and where it sat and its disrespect and all of that. I, I feel like the ACC's got every reason to, uh, to feel good. But to his point, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there is life without blue bloods, believe it or not. You may not get everything that you want. You may not get the easiest path, but there are teams out there that can still go and compete and compete at a high level and go win championships so long as they're given the opportunity. And I think that's the thing above all else is it's not the money gap and it's not all these these kind of petty things sometimes get pointed out about how you can't keep up. It's, uh, it's about having the opportunity. That's all it is. You have the opportunity. NC State had the opportunity as an 11 seed. Not a lot of people would have thought they would have gotten to this point. But without a whole lot of advantages, here they are. And here they are ready to make possibly an even bigger mark and make the biggest mark possible. And, and I think to, to want to live in a world where that's not a possibility anymore would kind of suck. So uh, congrats to the Wolfpack on, on making the most. And, yeah, the ACC's got – uh, plenty of options ahead of them, no matter what happens with Florida State and Clemson, although there's a lot of doors that we don't know quite what's behind all of them, but the, the idea that they would just falter is uh, is not necessarily the reality. By the way, Alabama was in a slide before they reached the SEC tournament, and even then, and then, of course, into the tournament, they were kind of uh, on fumes, and they got hot, too, at the end, and obviously very explosive. Here are some nuggets on the teams in the Final Four. Alabama. Their first ever appearance. Purdue, first time since 1980. They have had teams last year they lost to a 16 seed. And they've had others that were really good. Gene Cady, over and over again, they were always like, they were the team that you kind of, ugh. NC State, since the great Jimmy Valvano, beating Houston. And by the way, you're right, Kyle Visser, I mentioned unbeaten. I thought they were. I always thought they were. They were 31 or 33 and 3 that year, whatever the record was. But they were high flying and they were great. Uh, but NC State got them in the last second uh, tip in. UConn then is the difference here. Seventh appearance in the last 25 years. Trying to win their sixth national title. And they're forcing themselves. They're already a blue blood in my mind when it comes to basketball. They're women, of course, we know are. And now trying to win six and their seventh appearance in 25 years. That is incredible. What a run. Yeah, the only reason that people like forgot that UConn was a blue blood because they were like a new blue blood was because they had like gaps between it. You know, like little oh. But people, it's it's hard to do. It's especially hard to do what they've done. Um, I think it's cool that NC State's in this because they are, they're the team that I equate with of launching the modern March Madness. I think that team that beat Five Slamma Jamma, Jim Valvano. Oh no, that's I, what. Yeah, that's yeah, what. Yeah, made Indiana the, State's run with Larry Bird in '79. Yeah, yeah, so like kind those, of woke people up too. But yeah, Indiana State, like Magic and Bird, and then and then that in '83. Those things kind of made March what it is now. Like Exploded, that's what started. Yeah. That's what started it. Plus, you had incredible names too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I get. I get it. Uh, lowest seeds to ever make the Final Four. NC State, of course, is right now an 11 seed. I remember Dale Brown on LSU. Not surprised if Dale Brown, that game, uh, Tim Brando was not in, in, in attendance. George Mason made their run. Another 11 seed. VCU was Shaka. Loyola Chicago. UCLA. 11 seeds that have made it to the Final Four. NC State has a chance to make history in Phoenix. None of the previous 11 seeds made it to the national championship game. It's hard, but they have that chance to do so on Saturday night. Yeah, and if they do, that'd be pretty cool. Um, you know, obviously, we'll have to wait a few days to see what comes uh, in the next chapter of this story, but it's been a great little Cinderella ride. I saw plenty of folks pointing out how close they were to not even being involved. I mean, if the not for miraculous uh, yeah. shooting, you know, in the uh, conference tournament. And um, that was, little did we know at the time, a much bigger thing than it was seemingly at the time of just, oh, well, that's going to get them in the dance. And little did we know that all they needed was the invite to go and make a whole lot of noise and to turn the whole thing potentially on its head. But, uh, yeah, that was a really impressive uh, win over Duke. And uh, 
you know, somebody's got to lose there when it came to the ACC, which is unfortunate for the, the league, hoping to, you know, really – uh, go even crazier than they already had with uh, the number of representatives still standing at the end of the day. But that's the way it worked out. And I mean, what a game that was. And I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, they're, they're fun to watch, man. DJ Burns is, um, you know, the name that everybody now knows in March and uh, has enjoyed, I think, watching. I've seen a lot of people talking about him and just them in general. So let's see if they can finish the story uh, a la Cody Rhodes uh, all in the same month of, of, of April is uh, for those who know very fitting but yeah let's see if they can finish the story it's going to be easier said than done but it's, it's been a great one so far he is a big man with incredible touch I, I text Matt Rohr who used to be a college basketball coach back in the day now is uh, one of the administrators at uh, Baylor Scott and White Hillcrest he said he's got unbelievable nimble feet too but an incredible touch here is where he has been Tennessee is where he started his collegiate career. Winthrop for three years, then NC State. He's always, well, except the redshirt year. And when he was a freshman at Tennessee, he was kind of tall and lean. Now he is a, uh, what did you call him? The beefy ballerina. The beefy ballerina and averaging 10, 11, 12, 15 points per game. What a trend, uh, what a story. And again, another player who's taken care of of that tra- taking uh, advantage of the transfer portal, was really good at Winthrop and now on stage yeah. with NC State. Well, look, Winthrop is a place where he discovered his game and, of course, meatball subs, which I can get behind. Uh, so, uh, no, he's like, and he's so much fun to watch, and it's it because he is so nimble. Uh, and but, uh, but I mean, again, he'll back you down, and you know, th- those moves that he had and really, really befuddled Duke in the second half. And Kyle Filipowski. Fouled out now. I thought that we were going to see that thing where one of Duke's best players gets their fourth foul and then, you know, kind of just goes on to the rest of the game and everything's questionable. And they got a Duke call. They certainly did. They got a call uh, late in the game that should have been that should have been Kyle Filipowski's fifth foul, and they called it NC State. And then he got his fifth foul. But yeah, Duke played really frustrated yesterday in the second half. Uh, it's like they couldn't you know, figure out why things weren't going their way. And part of that, and I think it was a huge advantage for NC State to play a team that they're familiar with, is I don't think that Duke felt it um, because they'd seen NC State in their previous form of being a team that was very much in the middle of the pack in the ACC until the tournament and probably didn't respect them enough. Well, here's a note, and and I want to get to that. We have a lot of other nuggets to get to. Nikki Collin, Baylor women's coach, will join us at 4 on many things women's basketball, but also Rob Douster in a minute. And the voice of NC State who's trying to retire, but is sure as hell enjoying his long extended vacation trip beforehand with NC State basketball will join us today. And we have a a writer who covers Purdue near the end of the show. Here are, here's the run. Here is the run. Louisville, Syracuse, Duke, Virginia, and then North Carolina to win it all. I mean, they've beaten Duke twice on this nine-game streak, opened up with a Texas Tech and McCaslin, one by 13. They played Oakland, who had just beaten Kentucky, beat a two-seed Marquette, and then took on Duke, who had beaten Houston, which was a really tough ending for Houston with Jamal Shedd going down with the ankle injury. That has not, and there's nothing about it that's a fluke about their run to get to where they are today. No, um, and I'm glad that, for their sake, that, it wasn't them beating Houston with an injured Jamal shed because then I do think there'd be a little bit of a, uh, well, you know, and, and so there's not that because Duke was the team that beat Houston. I know we'll get to Houston in the big 12 here in a, in a few, but um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing to say, but uh, go and finish the story and um, you know, cap this off. But as far as, I guess if they had any doubters or haters or whatever, I mean, here they are, the proof's in the pudding, and they've gone on an incredible run this last month and uh, made a lot of waves, and it's been incredible to watch. But, yeah, there's there's nothing fluky about it at this point. Uh, you don't go and win that many games in the conference tournament, and then the big dance, uh, the way that they have uh, with you know just a little bit of luck on your side. You've got a, a good team uh, to a great team, and, and they're showing that, and they're flexing their muscles, and – to go and beat Duke and, and to be among the final four with an 11 hanging next to your name is is uh, something we usually reserve for schools that not many people even know exist half the time. Not a, an NC State, right? It's not usually 
um, a, a power four, power five school necessarily. I always think of uh, the George Masons or just somebody like that along those lines. But he, here they are, and um, you know now a mighty task in front of them, but that's not going to scare them or intimidate them as we've seen all too well these last few weeks. So one of the things about NC State, and I saw a note, I think it's me versus Echo Chamber, Carla Jenkins as well. NC State, had they not won the ACC tournament, they wouldn't be here. Right. Virginia misses a free throw. That sews that game up, and then they bank one in, as you mentioned, off the off the board, and, and, and they get there. But that's, you know, they wouldn't have made it, and they didn't have the resume to make it. So that's what's great about the tournaments, the conference tournaments, and about the opportunity. You have a door that's cracked break it down, take advantage of it, and they have absolutely been able to do that. Yeah, three at the buzzer to go to overtime. <laughs> well, otherwise, you're – you're, you know, you're not where you are. So, uh, yeah, that that uh, win over Virginia in overtime, bank shot at the buzzer uh, was the play that, you know, you're going to see a lot of, I would think, over the coming days. And certainly when this story is told years down the line, that's going to be front and center of, like, how this all start? And that's going to be a big part of it. So, yeah, took a little bit of luck, I guess you could say, to get in the spot. But nothing lucky about what they've done with that opportunity. Absolutely. All right. Uh, we will have Rob Dow.